Welcome to Unmasking the Man. We are here for all the candid conversations. And right away, let me introduce my guests again. Let me start from my left. Pastor Ray Cassis. Exactly. Uh, Levi Cones. And? Caswell Makoure. Aha. Uh -huh. Gentlemen, we want to talk about uh, why men are everywhere else but the church, but in the church. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if that statement is correct, so let me start with the pastor to tell us whether indeed men are not in the church or they are in the church. We are men, four of us, and as much as I know, we are in the church. Yes. Probably what we are asking is why some men mm -hmm. are avoiding the church or some men are leaving the church or why some men are uncomfortable with the church. And I'm sure there are reasons why men are uncomfortable with the church. First of all, it's good to understand that the majority of people in churches are women. Mm -hmm. And so it is possible that in the process of all these, uh, the church is becoming more feminine mm -hmm. and therefore uncomfortable for the typical typical men mm -hmm. who has not appreciated the spiritual angle mm -hmm. of the church mm -hmm. so that when they come in clearly the environment seems that probably the men are not are not welcome yeah maybe a man comes from a situation where there is a place for men and there is a place for women but they arrive here they find that women have an equal say you know women can push something so that could be one of the reasons mm -hmm. uh, another reason that we look at why men uh, could be avoiding the church is when they feel like the church is used as a leverage, uh, you know, to, to win wars, mm -hmm. the struggles, the spouse struggles, you know, the struggle that you are having probably with your spouse at home. And so the church is used, you know, you lose your leverage mm -hmm. when you become part of the church and you gain your leverage when you are when you are outside the church, you know, the Bible says, God says, you know, and what have you. So there are men who feel like if I go there, then I'm going into a territory where um, I'm losing. So that's where I want to begin and say that that could be some, the list is, is quite long, yeah. but uh, we are saying those could be some of the reasons why men uh, are avoiding the church. Some men mm -hmm. are avoiding the church. Yeah. Okay. Levi. Yeah. I'm not asking you anything. Yeah, you did, want to, go, you did want to go to the expert. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start with a quote by Mahatma Gandhi. He famously said, uh, I like their Christ, but I don't like their Christian. He was making reference to the followers of Christ. Mm. One of the biggest reasons why people turn away from church, and especially men, is the amount of hypocrisy sometimes that's in some churches. And when I talk about hypocrisy, I'm talking about Christians and how they live life. You know, we present one thing, and many times how we act when we are in uh, church and how we act outside church are two very different things. Too many of us guys have been called by Christians who have come in the name of business and hallelujah and praise the Lord and called you out of all your money, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, in fact, other faithfuls are even more scared in terms when it comes to their faith they are more scared when the words of faith are used, mm. that it seems we church the reverence of the name of God and Jesus is not there because somebody can call you and still, you know, and call you in the name of the Lord, basically speaking. I'm not saying that women's uh, inhibitions are a bit lowered, but to be honest, women tend to, when they are spiritually connected to something, they tend to lower their trusts uh, for, for the same. So you find that if a guy is uh, very well spoken, has good English, like our friend here, you know, uh, is wearing a good suit, carrying a big Bible, and you know, uh, saying all the all, all the wonderful things, mm. it's very easy to take him as somebody who is uh, authentic, right, mm. trustworthy, right. trustworthy, mm. yeah, and you can easily get conned. And we have a lot of infiltration of that in the church. And for most men, all men, many of us have got a wired. Uh, mm. Uh, what, what I would call a, some radar of some sort that can pick out the cons amongst our fellow men. Yeah. Mm, yeah. You know, have you ever told your wife, you know, that guy, ah, uh, 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 something about that. And it guy. looks like you're just a jealous guy. Yes. Yes. But we can see a con coming mm. a mile off. <laughs> that's true. You know, and that's, it. that's one of the reasons why, you know, uh, men then tend to shy away from, from church because they feel like, you know, 
they're in that space. If they find one, we are also very judgmental. Mm. So if you find one guy in the church, we judge the entire church from yeah. it. Mm. And you know, shun it and even tell the wife, do not go there to that church, they're terrible people, based on maybe one experience. Mm. And uh, COVID gave us an opportunity for men to run away from the church, honestly speaking. Mm. For many men, not being away from the, from, from, from the church made them feel like, hey, we're not going back there. In my own church, I can tell you, uh, before you bring in someone else, we are actually struggling with numbers mm. right now. Mm. Most of our people in my church are older. They're in their 60s, mm. uh, in their 70s. In fact, I'm one of the youngest people in the church. Mm. But you, uh, really speaking. Uh. Yeah, the people who are my age are very few, especially the men. The ladies, yes, they are there. And uh, when you go down to the 20s, mm -hmm. they're disappearing altogether. Mm -hmm. They are there in their teenagers, the teenagehood, because we must bring them to church. They yeah. are our children. Right. Mothers will say we are going with the children. But then there is that aspect of, you know, uh, men shunning. And then finally, let me, let me just say this. One of the things that is growing, especially in this day and age, is the use of science and atheism. Mm. The atheists are increasing day by day. The people who will tell you there's no God. The people who will tell you, you know, uh, these things are myths. The people who challenge yeah. uh, the Bible and actually misconstrue it are so many. Mm. And who are the people who buy hardest into science and things like that? It's men. Mm. To be honest, we have a problem wow. with our belief systems. Mm. And even those conversations, you know, sometimes back were not as, you know, mm. you know, pronounced. People could speak in low tones when it mm. comes to anything that opposes, you know. But now they are bold. Now mm. they are bold. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the critical thinking ability of guys, I think, when somebody tells you, ah, uh, did you ever see when, when Adam was being created? Mm. You know, you find a guy refusing to believe that. But then he can go and put his hope in the Big Bang Theory. Mm. Yeah. That something, you know, cat catastrophic which, happened. Which and equally here we, there was no one. And here we are, which equally <laughs> <laughs> no one saw. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting uh, because you, you've, the gentleman raised some very pertinent points. I think just to wait in, I think there's also a school of thought that um, Christianity was a tool of the colonizer. In my generation, uh, we don't make as much. And we... While we're questioning all economic systems, when we're questioning standards of beauty, when we're questioning uh, standards of authority, part of the thing we question is religion. Because it seems to be in the center, and the people who brought the religion, oh. they, they're not doing the way we're doing. So it's as, it's as if there's an inequality to it. So this is an aspect of men that say, this seems to be an unfair thing mm. that was used to brainwash us. And just to ask, to add on, on Levi's point on the questioning, we've gotten to the point where now we can question. You know, when we were younger, you'd ask certain questions and you'd be told, these things have not been revealed to us, yeah. or just believe. And men now struggle, they won't just believe, they want an answer, because men like to be in power, men like to be in control. That's why even if you think about like men's um, mental issues, you cannot, therapy for men and women should not be the same. And I know I'm taking a bit of a tangent, but the reason why you'd find even men are not going into therapy is because it encourages just conversation less than action doing. A man who's depressed is better off in the woods with his boys doing whatever men do, chasing things, hunting for things, than it is in a room saying, how does that make you feel? <laughs> so that's why you would find us, we would question at a very substantive level and ask, why is this? happening and so country adding to all of that and saying here i don't seem to have any autonomy because when i ask questions i will be told just believe this is not making sense and you know and, and the people who we are calling the disbelievers the non-believers the atheists they ask very pertinent points they ask if god told you to kill for me right now would you kill and then now we, you, they watch us meander and doing all those things i totally agree with you i always say you know uh we we have made the presentation of christ mm -hmm a very uh, lackluster affair. Right. Mm. And then that's number one. Number two is that those of us who are supposed to be in Christ are not living like we're in Christ. And the world right. can see it. Yes. You know, the world mm. can see it. Yeah. I mean, you drive out of church and you're the first person, you know, calling someone names on the streets yeah. because they cut you off in traffic. Right. You know, you're the first person who is seen taking a, uh, a corner at your office, you know, mm. accepting a bride yeah. or, uh, you know, placing a bride or doing these things. And the world can see it. Yeah. And they're like, really, is that really what a, mm. they even know the standards. Mm. Is that really what a Christian should be doing? Right. You know, you find somebody has been caught in the family way, has got, uh, you know, an, uh, um, what, an extra wife here and there. And, yeah. And, and people question, is that really Christian? Mm. Then you, on top of that, you've got an, an, an onslaught yeah. going on of people who are saying God is not there. Mm. So this guy is lost between the God he is seeing in some people, 
you know that is not existent, and the being told God is not there. Yeah. And you know, um, uh, one of the great Christian uh, uh, writers uh, uh, said that uh, uh, preach the gospel, use words if necessary. Mm. Mm. The gospel we are supposed to be preaching is our lives. Right, yeah. practical. People yes. are supposed to see you and say, my goodness, yeah. I want to know what that guy mm, is, is into. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, right What so. makes him do the things mm. the way yeah, he does like that. Yeah. Too many times our gospel is lip service. Yes. We, we, we say the words, we preach the, the verses, we don't follow it. And as a result, we lose people along the way. I would Absolutely. like to say that there are people who are maybe not so firm in their faith or have not even cited faith, but it's true. We do lose people along the way. And most of those people are men. Mm. Women can hang on a little bit longer. Right. Actually, women can give you leeway. A pastor can do something and women can be like, ah, yeah, but you know, he's still our pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Men will dismiss him on sight. Yeah. <laughs> and say that guy is useless. Yeah. We don't even want him near our home. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Does, yeah. This is a pastor you're calling useless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we are called, we, we're told not to touch, not the anointed. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 <laughs> you see, those are the things that feed into why men yeah. right, are not in church. Uh, but I think it would take men mm -hmm. to bring men back to church. Absolutely. Yeah, there, uh, there are men who are out of the church because they were driven out of the church mm -hmm. through disagreements, through, you know, the, somebody was in church but left the church. Mm. Either there was a misunderstanding in ha how to handle grievances. Uh, there is one gentleman who left the SDA church and started a very, very big church at the Kenyan coast. Mm -hmm a very successful financial enterprise. But when you listen to the talk, there was a disagreement about music, about choir. Mm. So sometimes how we handle disagreements can drive a man out. Mm. Because if we are the elders of the church and you disagree with me, then it seems this is your church. Mm. And you have decided to trample on me because you feel you own this the church mm -hmm. space more than me. Mm. So what do I do? I pull out. So there are men who are out of the church because disagreements were not handled very well. And unfortunately, in many churches, the people who are elders year after year are just the same faces. They just keep shifting who is the first elder. Mm. And But you, you find that even if you went for five years and came back, you mm -hmm. find it's just the same characters who are just, you know, it's musical chairs, right. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So when you disagree with the leadership of the church, mm -hmm you are actually disagreeing with almost people who look like partners, the yeah. owners of yeah. that facility. Right. Right. So it, that's why it is important sometimes to follow provisions that say that nobody should hold a position for too long mm -hmm. because it creates a situation where people are helpless. Yeah. Yeah, so that we are in this church, I've disagreed with him, he is the elder this year, he shifts a little bit to the uh, brother Cones, mm -hmm. then again he's back again. So the rest of us are at the mercy of the two, two, yeah. two of them, right. it drives people out. Another thing is that the nature of faith is that it requires some degree of belief and sometimes reasoning may not be totally welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it becomes offensive to the man, particularly if he wants to question why his wife and children should pray the whole, whole night when they just prayed the whole day in church. Mm -hmm. He wants his family at home. Mm -hmm. He wants to contain. So he feels he's losing the family. Right. The family left in the morning. They have been in the church the whole day. Then he gets a text and says, the man of God or woman of God. There are mm. also women of God mm. in this world. The woman of God has said, we must fast the whole night for a breakthrough. The man is wondering, which breakthrough? Mm. <laughs> because the testimonies you are giving there are the hard work I'm doing out here. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying the Lord has yeah. opened the doors. You guys, we need to come together and put effort together. Mm. So where a man finds himself, there was one professor who, who used to say that, where I would have otherwise protested, mm -hmm. I found it too spiritual. Mm -hmm. He says that I came <laughs> and I wanted to protest. I said, this is not right. It's spiritual, you know, in this spiritual stuff. Right. You, you don't protest. Yes. <laughs> so the best protest you can do mm -hmm. is Abandoned. to pull out. Yes. Is pull out yeah. and go your way and say, mm -hmm. no, I, don't lo I no longer want to be part of this. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the other reasons why men you know, would uh, 
avoid the church. Mm, yeah. Now, the third one that I will give for now is that men also go out of the church when they discover that it is not what it sold or it advertised mm, itself mm, to be. Mm. You know, I come with the guilt that I've been a corrupt government official. Yeah. I've been stealing money from people, taking bribes and what have you. And because I'm weighed down with mm -hmm. guilt, mm -hmm. I come to the church seeking solace. Yeah. Then I find the pastor and the elders, you know, they mm -hmm. bring me in their circle and out of blindness of the fact that I'm new, they openly talk about how they are misappropriating yeah, funds, funds. Yes. how they got a kickback yeah. by buying <laughs> cement, mm. so some cement was diverted to their project. Yeah. And all of a sudden I say, I thought I was coming to a place where I will find healing mm -hmm. for my guilt, right. only to discover that you guys mm. are as demonic yeah. as my colleagues where I came from. Mm. And so all of a sudden I discover that what is here you know, it's the same as there. Maybe mm. I left the world there or out there at my workplace. There is a fighting tribal. Mm. I'm being frustrated because maybe the government of the day speaks a certain language mm. and I don't speak that language. So my rising is frustrated tribally. Mm. So I'm so frustrated and somebody has whispered to me that if you go to church, your health will be okay. Mm. You know, you'll find peace. Mm. And then when I arrive here, I discover that his tribe and his tribe are in competition, mm. stiff competition. Mm. And you know, I can hear it yeah. as we take lunch. I can hear it when we visit each other for prayer. And I discover what? In fact, these guys seem more wicked mm. yeah. than where I came from. And so men eventually end up retreating. Now, it's good to clear the air and say that it, we are not approving yeah. of the idea that men retreat from the church. Right. Because really it doesn't solve the problem. Absolutely. Because the, the church is the body of Christ. And so the people should not make you to leave the body of Christ. They are equally guests. The house belongs to Christ. Right. These are guests. They are just behaving like they own the house, but they are mm. guests. And we believe that there will be a shaking time. The Bible says there will be a shaking time where those who don't belong mm. be shaken out. Yeah. And so we, we need to encourage men to stay, but it is good to point out because some of the people causing men to avoid the church are watching. Mm. And I some of just, them are men enough. And even as you come in, perhaps uh, also, if you could also, from your own experience, yeah. share with us as men, because... You guys are in church, mm. so why are you still in church as I, men? I think even just before I say why I'm still in church, one of the other things is there's a disconnect. There's a generational disconnect where, like I would say, if I wanted advice on finances, if I wanted advice on how to build myself as a young man to be a useful pillar of society, it's very hard for me to get it in church, despite the fact that the best lawyers, the best business people, the best teachers are here in church in the hierarchical setting as an ambassador, for example, or as a young youth, by the time I'm getting access to these people, they don't willingly volunteer the information the way that information is volunteered, for example, in bars. When you find a, naked, mm. uh, like when you find a, a drunk man, he will just pull you aside and say, Kijana, listen, I can pay a money market. Like, so, nobody... Experience. experience. No. <laughs> experience. I'm you telling you. Nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody just willingly volunteers that kind of information yeah. and makes you... Because as, as young people, mm. we are generally very valueless. Our contribution is not as significant. And in an in, in institution as, mm. as, as socially delicate and necessary as a church, your value as an elder, for example, because they make the most contributions. And I understand they're busy with their families as well. But young people might shy away due to those kinds of things. I'm not saying that it is justified because one of the reasons why I'm still in church is because I also get, I derive so much value because I go and talk to elders and tell them, I was told this by a man somewhere and they tell you, no, approach this differently. But if the church were a bit more friendly, it were, if it gave people the social solace that they look for, because young people generally outside of school and work, which is not as abundant, the church is now the next point of socialization. Mm. And while I come to a church and I realize all they want to make me do is just sing or every once in a while study the Bible in a group and talk about relationships because that's the ever, ever arcing theme. Somehow we'll find a way of making it into relationships. 
Outside that, I don't find a way, I don't see how will my life progress. And I'm not making that a church burden, but men will generally gravitate to places where they will be valued and they will do the things that ignite them. That said, I think for the men that I've seen, for the man, for the male friendships that I've formed in church, we stay there because we've made it such a healthy place where we will talk about our struggles as men. Mm -hmm. This is what we're struggling with. We will visit people. We, we plug into society. While we might not have all the money, we will go to the people who have the money and tell them, we are trying to do this. Can you assist us? I'm trying to put up a concept. We're trying to visit this children home. We're trying to, and in that way, I make a contribution and I feel I'm equally a part of the family as much as the men who you see are elders and whatnot. Yeah. So for a vast majority of people, if they're not as talented as, because for me, it was easy to plug into a big church because big churches are also quite difficult to penetrate. For me, it was easy because I sat, it was awkward for me for about four Sabbaths and somebody realized you play piano very well, never sit here in the crowd, go and sit in front and then life changed for me. But for a bunch of people who cannot play piano, who might not be as eloquent, who are just willing to be humble wheels to this, to cogs to this ever spinning wheel, I think it's very important for us to be very deliberate about how we engage them. Yeah. Mm. Uh, why am I still in church? I think I'm still in church because I, uh, my eyes are still on the ball, mm. on, mm -hmm. on, on Christ. Amen. Uh, Amen. Because and, and I'm cognizant of the fact that men are fallible, but yeah. it has taken me also a long time to get to that point. Right. Mm. Uh, I think growing up in a Christian home uh, myself, I had a first hand view mm. of uh, some of the fallibility of men of God. And I came to accept that they are all work in progress as they continue. And I think for every man who's there and has left church, right. you should know that you may have your judgments about people in church, but don't take away your eyes from Christ, mm -hmm. you know? Because uh, Mahatma Gandhi did not even bash Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He bashed Christians. Yeah. And still, mm -hmm. Christians will always have to, we all stand at the end of time in front of God to account for our days. Your yeah. pastor, the elders, you name them. We are mm -hmm. all going to stand and talk about what we did with our time. So you cannot use that as an excuse and a crutch for you not going uh, to church. And to churches, I would say, it's time to go back to the, the default settings, what church used to be. Mm. We've allowed uh, the spirit of money to come in, for example, you know, if you have uh, more money, you get some, you know, some clout in church. And uh, yesterday I was alluding to uh, uh, the pastor here about how uh, you know, if if I have money and clout in church and I lose a loved one, then I will get the bishop coming to, my, to, my, to my place. I'll yeah. get the, you know, the archbishop. If I don't have money, they send the intern pastor to come yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and pray for me. And those things, they sit, they don't sit well with Good people, man. you yeah. know. Yeah. Or, you go, or you go to a church and you're not considered as worthy of ever presenting anything on the mm. pulpit. But on Sunday, they will open it up to a politician to come and spew hate. Yes. You know, and uh, all manner of propaganda. And you right. say, really, I've been here. Yeah. I can't even make a prayer, yeah. you know. Or they have certain type of people that they will call, yeah. you know, for, for Bible reading, for prayer. Discrimination. Just discrimination. Mm. Or we've allowed tribes to mm. enter into, into the church. The things that are supposed to be of the world. The Bible has called us to be the salt. Yeah. You know, and when you are called to be the salt, it means that salt changes the texture, the taste of food. Right. Mm. You know, and so we must be able to be those people who can change the taste of the world yes. by not being the same as the world, but by being different agents. So yeah. church needs to play a role, but also as a man, don't take your eyeballs off Jesus Christ or else yeah. you'll be lost. If you follow people all the time and just look at their their, their salvation and use it as a benchmark for yours, mm. you will end up with the devil, my friend. Mm. Right. So pastor, as we encourage men to come back to church, how do we then make sure that it's not just, uh, you know, uh, rallying numbers behind, you know, the community and having as many men as possible, but really ensuring that the experience in, in and of itself is worthwhile. Yeah, there are certain things we may need to change as a church. Mm. Uh, not because we are getting converted into what men want, but because some things are not right. For example, disorganized programs. A newcomer comes to church and there is disorder. Endless announcements. You know, the program, no, no, you know, we know when the- What's wrong with announcements? <laughs> endless. endless. <laughs> we know when the program begins, yes. yeah. but nobody knows when it will end. <laughs> so church can run for six hours. I know yes. those things. Yeah. Yes. So that is not right. Yeah. It's not right for anyone. Yeah. And in the long run, there are people who will abandon that disorganization. Mm. Number two, fundraising. 
there is a new fundraising that is coming up in in Kenya that I've seen in Kenya where they say men go outside, women go outside, children go outside. We are fundraising to build a church. Men, what are you giving? What is your name? Just as how much are you giving? Yeah. Mm. Now other men are pledging 10,000, 100,000, 200,000. Uh -huh. You are struggling financially. You have a uh -huh. business that has just started. It is taking in more money than giving because that's how business begins. Yeah. And you are being told give. And you put your how long place. will you stay? Then you commit yourself, you look around, out of image and ego, you say 20,000, mm. which is already too low compared to what others are committing. Yeah. Mm. And you don't even have it. Mm. Next Saturday again, announcement comes, all men outside. Mm. Some of you men made a commitment. Mm. Some of you have not made. When we continue that way, and that is not the way the church raises funds that run the church. Mm. It has always been free will offerings and a tithe that is 10%. Mm -hmm. But when it gets to a point where put people into cell groups, prayer groups, mm -hmm. you know, and now you are drilling. And men don't want a situation where they're exposed that they don't have money. Yeah. And so when a majority of the churches are, la are running on funds, 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 simply because the church can't have a budget. Mm -hmm. You know, adults of sound mind can't even have a budget to operate a church. I'm almost angry. Let me mm. stop. We need to stop there. Let's let's stop. See where the anger is leading. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I may, I may, I'm about to say things. <laughs> you end this program. Let's end the program. <laughs> <laughs> you have threatened him to end the program. <laughs> Do you have anything to say that is not anger related? Before we just, <laughs> in a few seconds, as we conclude. I, I think, in closing, yeah. as, as, as Livy quite aptly put it, one, we need to oh. remember that Christ is the reason. And the analogy that I don't necessarily fancy, that it's like a hospital and those are patients. But if you, you know, if you leave the church because of Fellow it's patient. full of, you know, yeah, yeah. Of, of hypocrisy. It means that you were not there for Christ, but you're there for the people. And so if you know that in your heart of hearts you're seeking Christ, um, he has put us here to be in this world, but not of the world. So you need to make that conscious decision to know that it will not be easy, but it's worth it in the end. It's not a happy experience, but it's a joyful one. Right. So when we look at the sum total, I think it's better to be with Christ than, than otherwise. Cool. And and he will he will keep you. Right. He will keep you if you just trust in him. Thank you so much and yeah. thank you all gentlemen for being part of this conversation. And I hope that you can in all things try to establish that personal relationship with Christ and everything else will fall in place. Thank mm. you so much for watching. This has been Unmasking the Man. <laughs>